I think the greatest factor for me for helping our marriage last is probably the word commitment. Mm -hmm. And I kind of get on my soapbox whenever I talk about commitment, and Alan already knows this, but there are a lot of people out there who are committed to their relationship, but they're not committed to making their relationship the best it can be. They're mm -hmm. just committed to staying in the relationship. So when I say the word committed, you also have to do the little caveat behind that. Committed to making this relationship the very best it can be. Mm -hmm. The two becoming one. And then the motivation behind the two becoming one is that we want to demonstrate to the world that this is what God has in mind for two people coming together in a marriage. Right. So I, I think that Another factor that was really important, and it was really uh, a very subtle factor, is that both our parents were in lifelong marriages. Mm -hmm. And they, while well, they both struggled and they had their own issues and everything, and there were fights, but nevertheless they stayed together. Uh, they didn't get divorced. And while uh, we cognitively knew that we could, uh, we weren't programmed uh, to look at that as a real viable option. So consequently, if it's not an option, you work through things, and uh, you behave differently than if, it be, if it's a real viable option in your mind. You know, while we're talking about this, I do want to put in this little plug. I've been waiting years for tell Dr. Dob to tell Dr. Dobson that he is the one that I owe my salvation to. And so I'm really excited about that. Alan and I attended the Focus on the Family um, video series when they were first videotaping it in the Laurie Auditorium in San Antonio, Texas. Boy, does that date us a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And Dr. Dobson, early in the seminar, said, I'd just like to know how many committed Christians there are in the room. If you're a committed Christian, would you stand up? And I sat there and I thought, well, if he'd said, if you're a Christian, I could stand up. Mm -hmm. I was born in the United States. I was a Christian. But he used the word committed. And that was the word. Again, isn't that interesting mm -hmm. that that committed stays with me to this day, even in our relationship? Mm -hmm. And as I weighed the word committed, that's how the Lord brought the Holy Spirit into both of our lives. And we both became Christians after that seminar. Wow, yeah. that's a great story. Yeah, we'd been married about 10 years, and uh, that's when we became Christians. So. But that changed your marriage? Oh, oh that hugely. totally, totally yeah. changed our marriage. And mm -hmm. the motivation behind being married, and the reason to stay married. And, mm -hmm. and the desire to help other couples. Absolutely. The whole, the whole nine yards. Well, I think the thing that I learned that was really uh, helpful is that we were very different people mm -hmm. and um, that has caused a lot of uh, angst and problems in our early years because we were so different and we came to the marriage with different plays and uh, the way we sort of explain that to people is that we were born onto different teams and we learned what worked on those teams but then when we got married we created a new, new team we brought our old playbooks and we didn't share it with each other. So consequently we were operating with different expectations, different understandings, and it wasn't working. We got very frustrated with each other and there was a lot of tension. Just it. for an example, one of the plays that I came into our relationship with was if Alan loved me and cared about me, he'd know what I needed and wanted. <laughs> and you can imagine what happened if he didn't do what I needed and wanted, that translated to me you don't love me and care about me. Right. Mm. And so that, of course, would be disastrous. So what I learned about myself was that I had a responsibility to let Alan know what I needed and what I wanted in a mature, respectful way. And he was more than willing to help the team mm. come together with a much better play. But I had to be responsible for that. I couldn't make him responsible for things that I should have been. Response. We needed to learn to work together as a team. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we kind of found out along the way was that other people couldn't give us advice. They couldn't right. really tell us how they did it. Because we're a different team mm -hmm. and we're different individuals and we play the game differently than other people do. So we really had to come up with the plays on our own that would work. And through that process, thankfully, mm -hmm. um, we actually formed a a nonprofit of our own, and we help other people in their relationships. To figure uh, it out as well. We, so. we call ourselves marriage coaches. Um, we, were, we were different, but neither one was right or wrong. It was just different. 
and therefore um, it caused a lot of frustration because we didn't realize that. We, we took our views as being the right one and the other person being wrong. And when there's a right and a wrong, there's a winner and a loser. Mm. And when there's a loser, they, they want to get even, and that dynamic is just really poison for a marriage. First and foremost, it has taught me that I can be a better person to externally mm -hmm. outside of the relationship as well as internally because Alan sharpens me mm -hmm. and perfects those personality characteristics in me um, that need perfecting that are rough and because he's a kind and gentle person mm -hmm. and he will bring those to my attention in a kind and gentle way and then help me work on those things that cause me to be rough around the edges externally. Yeah, and I feel exactly the same way about Autumn and how she has helped me that way as well. Uh, we really do complement each other mm -hmm. and we've learned how to do that. I think the other thing that I've learned about the marriage is that bitterness uh, is really easy mm -hmm. and hurts are really easy to hold and, and grudges and, and carry forward. But forgiveness is difficult and it is forgiveness that really brings the happiness. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been said that uh, b bitterness keeps you trapped in a time and place of someone else's choosing. And the key to, to getting rid of that so that you can be in control of your life is forgiveness and letting it go. It's a journey. Oh, the Our process. marriage is a process. Yeah. You never get there. Mm -hmm. And so I have a saying, it's enjoy the journey. <laughs> 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 because I'm going to be in it for a really long time. Yeah. Well, I think that um, really getting coaching is very helpful. <laughs> and in coaching, the reason I say that is that we don't know the relationship skills. And, and therefore, we need somebody to help us develop them early so we don't get bad habits. Mm -hmm. And just for example, some of those relationship skills are communication. What are you going to do when you're angry with each other? Mm -hmm. How are you going to handle bitterness in your relationship? Mm -hmm. How are you going to handle conflict in your relationship? You each bring that different play that we talked about. Oh, this is how you handle conflict. Well, poor Alan didn't handle conflict the way I handle conflict. And it took us years to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So I like what you said about people really, newlyweds especially, really need a good coach mm -hmm. to help their, their team get on the same page and play the same game. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not only sufficient to, kn to know the skills, mm -hmm. uh, but you need to apply the skills. Yeah. And that's where um, a coach really helps because uh, coaching is a couple, three months, and the couple is coached into applying the skills to get the results they want. And as the skills are applied, they become new behaviors. So they and have that accountability they have to that, keep them on track. They have the accountability, and then they learn the new behaviors, and then mm -hmm. it becomes second nature, and they can, they can mm -hmm. easily do it on their own. And that's why all those classes and all those retreats and all those weekend things that Alan and I went to didn't work for us because there was no application. Mm -hmm. We heard somebody give us advice or tell us this is a skill, but we didn't ever practice it. So Monday morning we were back to using our old plays with each other and wondering what on earth happened after this weekend. Mm -hmm. Because we had good intentions, we had the knowledge, but we hadn't learned how to put it into application and apply it to get the results that we want. The, the other thing that I think was that, that is good advice is that in the early years, I would focus on Autumn's behavior and I'd respond out of my feelings, how her behavior made me feel, and then I'd respond. But what I learned is that I really need to focus on her feelings and my behavior that causes her feelings. Hmm. It's just and reverse. I, and I need to do the same thing. Hmm. Focus on what Alan is feeling and what I did to perhaps cause that feeling. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it takes you away from being self-centered to being spouse-centered. Mm -hmm. And then it really does help you to understand and to find out what's going on. So you can modify your own behavior and get different results. Because it's our behavior that creates our results. And if we don't change our behavior, we're not going to get different results.